Becker, Episode 11, The Magistrate Arrives on Wednesday. Few things galvanized Sergeant Drake more than the appointment of the new magistrate. He firmly believed you had to take advantage of their early days on the bench when they were principled and unafraid and believed they could really change the world. The days before they became bitter and frustrated at seeing the same criminals and the same crimes over and over again. As for me, I was more than happy to help. Particularly since Drake was after the gamblers. Not the sociable poker players, you understand, but the high stakes take your farm no matter what charmers. So my brother says it's victim. The victim was the blue tail fly. Everyone knows it's verdict. The verdict was the blue tail fly. Exactly. Could we please I'll just... see Mr. Becker's hundred and raise it another two. He beat the pulp out of me over that. But I never gave in. Drove him crazy. Little things, eh? I'll raise you another three. There are situations in which it is genuinely unwise to bluff. Just play cards, Harlow. Mr. Becker... I am inclined to think your estimate of Mr. Coe's intentions is accurate. I'll see you, sir. That's it, then. Threes and sevens. Looks like my luck's changing, but not quite enough. Thank you, gentlemen. I'd like a new deck. Your privilege, sir. Are you in, Mr. Becker? I can't afford not to be. There speaks a true gambler. You think uh, we could just play in silence? Did I say something? Whistling that stupid song again. Cut. What say we up the ante, say $150? Ooh, might be a bit too rich for me. Mr. Becker? I'm not sure. Give you a chance to win back some of the money this crooks won from us. Be careful, Mr. Coe. Even at the poker table, there are rules. Yes, there are, Mr. Harlow. You're suggesting... Yeah, let's just calm down now, all right? No one's suggesting anything. Keep out of this. Okay. Where are you going? I thought I'd just take a little walk along the hall. Let you fellows work out your own problems. The game's over, then? I just wanted some air. Not allowed, I'm afraid. Okay, okay, I apologize. One more hand for friendship. Okay. Why not? Good for you, sir. 150, wasn't it? Cut. What the... Police! This is the raid. Oh, my God. Just stay put, sir. You too. Believe me, I have no intention. Keep your hands where I can see them. He's got cards in both sleeves and the right-hand pocket of his jacket. Very observant, Mr. Becker. I've seen a lot of cheaters, Harlow. And I've seen a lot of cops. I would never have suspected... I'm the hotel detective. That explains it. Yeah? There's a certain sophistication not found in your average Mountie. Comes from rubbing up against a higher class of people. James Harlow, I'm arresting you in the name of the king. Can I get my bank draft back then? That's up to the magistrate. Mr. Cole, Howard Cole. Where do I find the magistrate? He'll be here in three days, if we're lucky. That long? You think you're going to hold me for three days? Not a hope. You'd like to make a small bet on that? Mr. Cole? Hello, Mr. Cole? Oh, hey. It's Miss Highwood, Mr. Cole. Cascade Messenger. If you just grant me a few minutes of your time. Go away. Didn't you hear me? I'm afraid I can't do that, Mr. Coe. I owe my readers. But I don't owe you or your readers anything. Just a few questions, for the record. Can I help? Becker, just the man. Could you explain to Mr. Coe? You, if it wasn't for you. I have a few questions. Don't you understand? I'm ruined, and I don't want to talk about it. Okay, all right. Now let's just calm down. I just want some answers. Don't make me do my job, Fiona. What job is that? Now, Mr. Coe, if you'll return to your room. You're ignoring me, Becker. I'm sorry. Sorry, Miss Highwood. Another time I would talk to you, but it's just not convenient. I have my packing to finish. Packing? You don't expect me to stay around here. 
I think the sergeant does. You can say everything I have to say. How much did you actually lose? I think you better come in here. If you like. Only Mr. Becker. Becker, if you... Becker! Don't worry, she'll give up soon. You better look at this. Absolute quiet is strongly advised. Undue use of the vocal cords could have the most severe medical consequences. I assume this isn't a note from your doctor. It was pushed under my door a couple of hours ago. Did it come in an envelope? Just that. Well, at least we know whoever's threatening you is in the hotel. What? The watermark, you see. Specially made for Dominion Hotels. Well, that settles it. You'll have to make your case without me. I'm going home. No. Sergeant. No, no, no. There is absolutely no reason for you to deny me an interview with the prisoner. No. Have you asked Mr. Harlow if he'd like to speak to me? No. Are you going to? Look, Miss Highwood, I know criminals are very romantic, and I know that a lot of the ladies like to read about them. That's their lookout. But I believe the kind of glorification of criminals I read in the paper... Not my paper. ...and the editorials in favor of legalized gambling, which I have read in your paper... We have a disagreement there, sir. ...are highly influential when it comes to turning easily influenced youngsters into gangsters. I don't believe this. Believe what you like, but I'm still not letting you down into the cells. This is censorship. I'll apply to the magistrate. That's your privilege. When he gets here. Until he does, you've got my decision. Whoever said this was a free country? Not me. So Mr. Cole received a threatening letter and he ran. That's about it. Why are you telling me this? Why not? You weren't all that cooperative this morning. This morning I was doing my job. Now I'm not. That's it? I'm afraid so. So what are you going to do about the threat? Actually, there's not a whole lot I can do. I'm pretty sure the one against Coe came from inside the hotel, but that's about all I've got. What about the others? What? I mean, you said the one against Coe. Doesn't that imply there were others? I got this a couple of hours ago. You won. Don't think you'll win again. Well, this is... This is terrible. What are you going to do? For the moment, keep my eye on the door. You'll have to stay with me. I don't think so. Well, of course you will. They're going to be looking for you at the hotel. Well, that's it. It's got to be someone who works at the hotel. Why do you say that? It's obvious. You'd have to know where your room was to deliver this. Unfortunately, whoever it was put it in an envelope and dropped it in the hall. A bellboy picked it up and brought it to me. Harlow's got to know who's doing this, doesn't he? Probably. Maybe if I talk to him. Why would he tell you? These guys love it when you're right about them. He might let something slip. Forget it. Why? I don't want you involved. And even if I did, Neil will never let you near him. Why? He doesn't think you're serious enough on some issues. He thinks you take gambling much too lightly. You could convince him. But I agree with him. For God's sake, Becker, this is 1925. I'm sorry, Fiona, so but I can't let you... So what do I do to convince the official and the unofficial guardians of the community that I take my work every bit as seriously as they do? Maybe you should start by interviewing the victims before you put all your efforts into flattering the criminal. If you remember, I tried to interview the victim, Becker. You stopped me. <sighs> Mr. Coe didn't want to talk to you. Well, that doesn't matter. Unfortunately, it does to the people who employ me. That excuse is getting a little thin, Becker. <sighs> Look, we've got a new magistrate arriving soon. Why don't you concentrate on him? I assume they like to be flattered as much as criminals do. Could he get me in to see Harlow? At the moment, he's probably the only person who could. What's his name? Prentice, I think. Judge A.E. Prentice. I'll see you later. What? I've got work to do. Oh, and Becker, the offer I made earlier. About staying with me? I'll be downstairs in the office if you decide to take me up on it. I would love to have taken her up on it. But I wasn't going to. Not until I found whoever it was who was threatening me. I wasn't bringing that to her. Besides, I had a criminal to flatter. I was never very good at flattering people. Not that Harlow would have noticed. He was so sure of himself, he probably didn't notice a thing I said. No, I got no idea where they came from. They are kind of humorous, though, aren't they? If you're not being threatened. And I assume you've got no idea who might have sent them. It wasn't me. 
Yeah, well, if you find out who it is, let them know it's not going to work. You sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. Bet you I'm out of here in less than a week. You're on. Stakes? No stakes, Harlow. It'll be enough for me to know you lost. And to know you know you lost. Someone wants to see you, Becker. Oh, yeah? Who's that? The new magistrate. I'll be right there. Looks like things are moving faster than you thought, Mr. Harlow. Faster than we both thought, Mr. Becker. Give my regards to the judge. Tell him to drop in if he's got a minute. I'd hate to leave without seeing him. Don't worry. You won't. We'll see. I'm not going to stand here forever, Becker. <laughs> Judge Prentice, Mr. Becker. Pleased to meet you. Sir, Sergeant Drake says you'll be looking after me. I've got to stay with the prisoner. Someone's got to guard the judge. There's been another threat. I picked this up at the hotel. I'll have to check with Mr. Hickey. I understand if you're not enthusiastic. Uh, no, no, I'll be happy to do it. Then you're officially deputized. Good. Now, if you'll send the evidence up to the hotel, Sergeant, I'll make that my headquarters. Yes, probably a good idea. So, when do I get my badge? I'll see if I've got a spare one. I'm not sure I find this all that amusing. Yes, sir. Absolute quiet is strongly advised. Undue use of the vocal cords could have the most severe medical consequences. That was pushed under Mr. Coe's door. The victim your sergeant let go. There's no way he could have detained him, sir. I am acquainted with the law, Mr. Becker. Yes, sir. Now, this one you received was dropped on the floor? Yes, sir. But you have no idea when? I could make an educated guess. Yes, well, we're not looking for a guess, educated or otherwise. Did you question the bellboy? He didn't see anything. Perhaps I'd better talk to him. As you please. Exactly. Now, the threat against me was left at the hotel desk. Around one o'clock. But the clerk has no idea who left it. It was checkout time. It's very crowded. You should time. have had them on their toes, Becker. Yes, sir. Now, what are you doing at the moment to trace these threats? Well, there's not a lot I can do at the moment, sir. You know what I mean. I've got the staff on the lookout. At last. And I was talking with Harlow when you arrived. No results there, but if I kept at it, he might have let something slip. You think so? He's an arrogant sort of bastard. Probably thinks he'd never let anything slip, but... In some ways, men like that are the easiest. They're too busy preening to keep a close eye on what they're saying. Interesting theory. I'll keep it in mind when I meet him. Do you have a gun, Mr. Becker? No, sir. Then how do you expect to guard me? I'll manage. Don't you think you're underestimating your opponent just a bit? Most criminals are fairly stupid, sir. Really? Well, this one seems to be a bit more intelligent than his pursuers, if you take into account his ability to remain free. Of course, you wouldn't agree with that, would you, Becker? Whatever you say, sir. Let's start again, shall we? Have you given any thought to dinner? Sir? Food, Becker. I assume you've been around the hotel long enough to expedite that. I'll have a beefsteak well done, roast potatoes, vegetables, whatever they've got, uh, apple pie. Have you got that, Becker? I'm sorry, sir. Did you want me to place your order? Well, that's what you're here for, isn't it? To look after me? Shall I write it down for you? Steak, roast potatoes, and a large pot of coffee, I think. I suspect it's going to be a long night. I suspect you're right. So that's it. Exhibit number one, a couple of marked decks and a number of extra face cards. Exhibit number two, this draft purportedly signed by Mr. Cole. It would be stronger if he were here to identify it. But we don't need him. And why is that? Because I saw him sign it. And that is unfortunately the problem. Everything in this case seems to depend on you, you and your friend, the sergeant. Strictly speaking, we don't even have a victim. Because someone scared him off. But that someone wasn't Harlow. That's the one thing we know for sure. So he has an accomplice. Can you produce him? Given time. My court sits tomorrow, Becker. Maybe we're overlooking something. Can I see the notes again? Be my guest. They're on the chair. Let's see. 
undue use of the vocal cords could have the most severe medical consequences. All right, what do we know? He's got an educated turn of phrase. He's using hotel stationery. Take your time. I don't see it. Exactly. That's it, then. You can call the sergeant and ask him to release the prisoner. What? Release the prisoner? I told you, Becker, we don't have a victim. Yes, we do. Me. I lost more money in that game than Cole. But it wasn't your money. You and your friend the sergeant ensnared Mr. Harlow. Morally, I find that a shabby basis for a prosecution. And frankly, without corroborating testimony... But the man's a cheater. We can prove it. Not without evidence, Becker. Precise, scientific, physical evidence. You haven't read my deposition. Would it change my mind? It should. Then, by all means, let's be thorough. I'll read your deposition, and you can continue whatever it is you're doing with these notes. A statement of James Becker. Hmm. Excuse me, sir. Something wrong, Mr. Becker? That song. Mm-hmm. What? I've heard it. Answer the door, Becker. Perhaps you better stand over to the side. Are you sure that's necessary? We wouldn't want you blown to smithereens, would we? Good of you to feel that way. Who is it? Fiona Highwood. With the Cascade Messenger. It's the local paper, sir. Oh, let them in. Let them in. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Becker. Miss Highwood. Come in. Thank you. Miss Highwood, I'd like to present Judge Prentice. Judge Prentice, Miss Highwood. Oh. How do you do, Miss Highwood? You're... You're not at all the way I imagined you. You're so young. Youngest judge on the bench. My, that's... That's a story in itself. (laughs) Sit down, Miss Highwood. I'm afraid I have nothing to offer you, but I could send Mr. Becker out for something. Tea, perhaps? Uh, No, I'm fine, thank you. I was hoping you might grant me a short interview. Right now? I have a deadline. Then we'd better get down to it. Wait outside, please, Becker. Excuse me? I prefer to talk to Miss Highwood privately. You can take the notes with you. Uh, but I'm sure not... I'm in no danger from the young lady. Not until her paper comes out, at any rate. But this I really is don't... a very important story, Mr. Becker. If that's what you want. You obviously have more power over my staff than I have. Mr. Becker is always a gentleman. <laughs> I'll be right out here. Thank you for your time, sir. My pleasure, Miss Hagrid. Good interview? Excellent. It's amazing how different it was from interviewing a criminal. I talked to Mr. Harlow earlier. Innocent until proven guilty, Miss Hagrid. Of course. What would you say was the difference? Honesty, I think. Mr. Harlow spent all his time attempting to convince me of his honesty. An honest man doesn't have to do that. Oh, if that were true, Miss Highwood, it would certainly make my job on the bench a good deal easier. Hmm, Perhaps it's just a woman's intuition. Hmm. But you're probably right. Some people just aren't what they seem. Good night, sir. Mr. Becker. Miss Highwood. You can come in again, Mr. Becker. Thank you, Judge Prentice. A very intelligent woman. I guess so. You don't think so? I spent a good deal of time chasing her out of the hotel. She's not a favorite of the manager's. I suppose that accounts for it. It? I noticed a certain tension. I try not to show... You'd make a lousy poker player, Mr. Becker. Now, let's get back to your deposition. See if there's anything you're trying to hide in there. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes. He's gone and the jury wondered why the verdict was the blue tail fly. Jamie victim. What? Victim. The victim was the blue tail fly. Not the way I learned it. You learned it wrong. Victim? The victim was the blue tail fly? The old man died and the victim was the fly that bit him? That's an interesting way of thinking for a judge. It has nothing to do with thinking, Becker. Those are the words. Well, it's not worth arguing about, is it? I can sing mine and you can sing your words. He's gone and the jury wondered why the verdict was the blue tail fly. No, if you can't sing it right, please, don't sing it at all. Well, I'll try. Don't try. Just don't sing. Don't whistle. Don't hum. 
I'll try. You know, the more tired I get, the harder it is to control something like that. No more. I met a man recently. We were talking about things, parents, family, stuff like that. Turned out he was an orphan, raised by his big brother. Now, the brother looked after him like a father, quite reasonable, except that he was absolutely crazed on the subject of song lyrics. This wasn't too much of a problem until the man realized that his brother wasn't always right. In fact, about one song, he was completely wrong. You know what that song was? I've got a good idea. And if you were thinking the blue tail fly, you'd be right. The older brother insisted the words were, the victim was the blue tail fly. But the younger brother, the man I was talking to, kept on singing verdict. The verdict was the blue tail fly. He probably thought he'd found a little area all his own. Some independence. When the elder brother suddenly exploded. Beat the pulp out of him. All over the blue tail fly. Being right means a lot to some people, Becker. Yeah. Big brothers. Judges. Just what do you think you know? Only what Miss Highwood told us. Some people just aren't what they seem. Since I know she didn't interview Harlow, I assume she's talking about you. She could have meant... And as you're as crazed about the words to songs as Mr. Harlow's brother, I think we'll find out you're not Judge Prentice. Ingenious. But hardly evidence. Oh, yes, evidence. Precise, scientific, physical evidence. You're a good student, Mr. Becker. Let's see if this meets the criteria. Exhibit number three. The notes you were generous enough to let me study in the hall. Notice the handwriting? How would you characterize the writer? Pedantic? Arrogant? Someone who might feel it necessary to write out his dinner order for a subordinate? Maybe a bit too good. Now, exhibit number four. One dinner order which I am prepared to swear you wrote out, and which you'll notice is in exactly the same hand as exhibit number three. And you think that means... That means you're not going to walk into court tomorrow and dismiss the case against your little brother for lack of evidence. Now I will call Sergeant Drake. It takes a certain cunning to use a man against himself, Becker. But it's still stupid to walk into a lion's den armed with nothing but faith. That sounds like a revolver, mister. Is it Harlow as well? Put down the phone, Becker. Slowly. I told you... Put it down and turn around. Okay, okay. Don't shoot. Not until I've got a chance to shoot back. So you had a gun after all, Becker. I like to play my cards close to my chest. So where do we go from here? We could throw the guns away. I don't think so. Then we wait. One of us is bound to fall asleep. I don't think so. You can't leave. You're not going to shoot me, Becker. And you know, if I shoot you, then there's no reason for me not to shoot anyone else who gets in my way. Are you prepared for that? You know I'm not bluffing. Okay, you win. Very wise. You know, I always wanted to be a judge. Have all that power. Particularly over someone who thought criminals were stupid. I enjoyed that. Much more than I'd enjoy shooting you. Not me, Francis. Not me. Freeze in the name of the king. Get out of my way. Fire! So you got Drake, and I'm impressed. Now, you suggested I do the story on Judge Prentice. It wasn't that difficult to find out that he was 57 years old and distinguished by a mane of snowy white hair. So where is the old boy? Arriving tomorrow. According to Sergeant Drake, he doesn't know a thing about this. No, oh, that's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The sergeant got both of the Harlow brothers, and I got my story. And you got to spend the night here. While you were downstairs putting up the paper. I'm here now. You know, for a moment, after I heard the shots, when I believed Drake had shot him down, for a moment, I was almost joyful. That man's power offended me, humiliated me. Do you understand? It happens to me every day. What? 
Well, did it ever strike you oddly that Drake would let you play detective with Arlo, but he wouldn't let me see him? But that was... Yes? As much as I can take in right now... I don't know. I have to... You took a hell of a chance with that. Some people are not what they seem. Not as big as the one I'm taking now. You don't have to. Kiss me, Becker. just heard, The Magistrate Arrives on Wednesday, Episode 11 of Becker, written by Martin Kinch. Andy Maton played Becker, and with him were Natasha Georges as Fiona, Daryl Shuttleworth as Sergeant Drake, David Storch as Harlow, Les Carlson as Cove, and Brian Taylor as Prentice. Music was composed and conducted by keyboardist Miles Jackson, with Gary DeBook on drums, John Hyde on bass, Carl Roth on fiddle, and Robert Day on trumpet. The recording engineer was Bob Doble, with sound effects by Uta Shafflin. The production assistant was Christine Story. Becker is produced and directed in Calgary by Martin Fishman. Our series executive producer in Toronto is Bill Howell. For The Mystery Project, I'm Bob Bovin.